The human body has four basic levels of organization. Cells, tissues, organs, and body systems. Let's start by talking about cells. Cells are the smallest unit of life. In fact, cells are so small that we can't see most cells without a microscope. So we can think of cells as the building blocks of life. Groups of similar cells that carry out a specific function together are what we call tissues. So groups of cells are what we call tissues, and groups of tissues make up what we call organs. Some common examples of organs are the stomach and the lungs, and let's now take this one step forward. Groups of organs that work together to perform a function are what we call systems. For example, your digestive system. From smallest to largest, we have cells, tissues, organs, and body systems. But you might be wondering, how am I going to remember these from smallest to largest? Well, here's a trick I came up with that you can use. When you hear the word cell, I want you to think about a cell phone. And when you hear the word tissues, just picture a box of tissues. Now think about it. What's bigger, a cell phone or a box of tissues? Well, generally, a cell phone, at least any cell phone that I've seen, is smaller than a box of tissues and can even fit inside the tissue box. So that's how you remember that tissues are bigger than cells. Now, when you hear the word organ, I want you to think about picturing an actual organ. You can see that clearly an organ is bigger than a tissue box or a cell phone, right? Can't you? So that's how you'll remember that organs are bigger than tissues and cells. Just remember that body systems are groups of organs. So in this picture, rather than just showing one simple organ, we see a whole system here. So hopefully that'll help you remember that body systems are the biggest. Pop quiz. Which of the following is the largest? A. Cells. B. Tissues. C. Organs. Or D. I give up. And the reason we're doing this is because learning something and then immediately quizzing yourself on it is a scientifically proven technique to help stick things in your memory. So that's why I incorporate quizzes into this video, and if you try the quizzes, the better you're going to remember the information. So think about this, pause the video if you need to, answer the question, and then we'll go over it. All right, hopefully you had a chance to think about this, but the answer is organs, and if you're not sure why, please review the first opening minutes of the video. Here's question two. Put the following in order from smallest to largest. Pause the video, do it now. Okay, so again, from smallest to largest, we've got cells tissues, organs, and organ systems. And here's that picture again just to drive the point home. So now I want to show you some examples of different human body systems. So there's circulatory system, respiratory system, immune system, the digestive system, and the nervous system. Then also reproductive, urinary, muscular, skeletal, and endocrine. Now we're just going to focus on a few of the most important ones in this video. We're not going to cover all the body systems here, but if you do want to see more, let me know down below in the comments. And we're going to start this video off by looking at the circulatory system. So the key organ of the circulatory system is the heart. And your heart is a muscle, and it pumps blood through the vessels in your circulatory system. You can strengthen your heart by exercising, particularly doing cardiovascular exercise like running, walking, riding a bike, anything like that. An elliptical machine, too, is an example. And when your heart pumps blood, the blood goes to your arteries, then your capillaries, then the veins, and then finally back to your heart again. So one way to remember what the arteries do is to look at the first letter of the word, which is A, and know that the arteries carry blood away from the heart. Hopefully you see that both the word artery and the word away start with the letter A to help you remember that arteries carry blood away from the heart. So again, blood leaves the heart through the arteries, goes to the capillaries, to the veins, and back to the heart. Now, an easy way to remember what the capillaries do is to look at the first letter of that word, which is C, and see that the capillaries connect the arteries to the veins. So hopefully you see that both the word capillaries and connect start with C, which is how you can remember that the capillaries connect the arteries to the veins. And lastly, you should know that veins carry blood back to the heart. All right, quiz time, question three. Let's see if you can get this one right. Which blood vessel does blood travel through first as it leaves the heart? Pause the video, think about this, and we'll go over it. So the answer here is A, arteries. Just remember, blood goes from the heart to the arteries, to the capillaries, to the veins, and back to the heart. 
Okay, so moving forward with the circulatory system. Taking a closer look at what the capillaries do, what I want you to remember about capillaries is that they're sites of exchange. They have little holes or pores in them, and some people like to think of these holes like Swiss cheese, or like windows, or even like a garden hose with holes poked in it. And however you want to think about it, just know that capillaries are sites of exchange. For example, let's say that this is a person, right? And let's let the gray face up here at the top represent represent that person and let the blue oval on the screen represent your lungs more specifically let the blue oval on the screen represent an air sac in a lung and the fancier word for an air sac is alveolus so again the gray face is a person and the blue oval is part of the lung the red part down at the bottom represents a capillary all right and the darker holes in that capillary represent those pores for exchange. So when you breathe in, you breathe oxygen, which I've abbreviated on the slide as just simply O2. And when you breathe, you breathe in O2 through your nose, and it goes in through your nose and down into your lungs. Then from the lungs, the oxygen is going to go into the capillary, and it's going to exchange for carbon dioxide, which I've abbreviated as CO2. So when you breathe in, you're breathing in oxygen, and when you breathe out, you're exhaling carbon dioxide. Note that this exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, it's happening in the capillaries. So if you just ignore everything on the slide right now, except just look at the face, the gray face on the screen, and let everything else just go, don't worry about it. Just focus on the gray face right now. And remember that this face here, this is showing that the oxygen that you breathe, you're going to take it in through your nose or in through your mouth, all right? And it's going to go down to your lungs, which I've represented as this blue oval circle thing on the screen. And the oxygen, once it goes into your lungs, next it's going to go to your capillary. And oxygen and nutrients are going to then pass from your blood into your cells at the capillaries. Now at the same time, CO2 or carbon dioxide and waste products are going to pass back from the cells into your blood at the capillaries. And then what's going to happen? Well, the CO2 is going to go back to the lung, and then you're going to breathe the carbon dioxide back out. Now, I know someone out there is wondering, what happens to the waste products? Well, some of those waste products are going to be excreted in your urine, but for our purposes here, this isn't that important. I just really want you to get that you breathe in, oxygen goes to your lungs, to the capillaries, and then to the cells. And at the same time, CO2 is going to go from the cells to the capillaries, back to the lungs, and then you're going to breathe it out. So switching gears a little bit, let's now talk about the respiratory system. And the key organs to remember about the respiratory system are the throat, the nose, the trachea, and the lungs. And the key function of the respiratory system is to take in oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide, as we've just talked about. So you might be thinking, well, I already know what the nose, throat, and lungs are, but what about the trachea? Well, I want you to remember that the trachea is the main airway into the lungs. And the trachea is more commonly called the windpipe. So let's look at this a little bit more in depth. So don't worry about all the details on the screen right now. We're going to go through just the most important things one by one. And the first thing that I really want you to see, which I've highlighted in red here, is that we can divide the respiratory system up into both the upper respiratory tract and the lower respiratory tract. Now, the pharynx is part of both the digestive system and the respiratory system. And the larynx is what we call the voice box, and it's involved in your speech. So we can see that the throat is part of the upper respiratory tract and that the trachea is part of the lower respiratory tract. While the lower respiratory tract infections are going to involve the airways below the larynx, upper respiratory tract infections occur in the structures in the larynx or above. So I want you to know that the trachea branches into two tubes called the bronchi. Be aware that there are primary bronchi, secondary bronchi, and tertiary bronchi, but the bronchi are going to branch into even smaller tubes called the bronchioles, and at the end of each bronchiole, is an alveolus. And when we talk about just one air sac, we say alveolus, which hopefully you remember from early in the, in the video is just a fancy word for an air sac. And when we talk about multiple, we say alveoli. And the picture also shows that we can divide the bronchi up into primary, secondary, and tertiary, but you don't have to spend too much time knowing the differences between these things. I just want you to be aware of them. Okay, practice question. Bronchitis is an inflammation of the lining of the bronchial tubes. Many patients with bronchitis experience cough and shortness of breath. Which of the following is correct? A. 
Bronchitis is an upper respiratory issue or B. Bronchitis is a lower respiratory tract issue. So pause the video, try to think this one through, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so the answer here is B. And you should note that here in the lower respiratory tract, we see that's where the bronchi are. So that's how you would get that right. So thank you so much for watching. Your next step, if you haven't seen it yet, is to watch my GED science video on photosynthesis. I'll break down photosynthesis and help you understand that. And good luck on the GED science test.